Hello and welcome back to another Kermit 998 Railways Review video. So we're back again, seemingly. So today we are taking a look at his brand new, well his brand new, not it's not a new model, C44 ACI by Decision Models. <laughs> So the C44 ACIs have been out for a little bit now, um, so yeah, it's a, he's he I unboxed one of them for uh, him in the past, and as well as that, he's got another one in this particular live well in the same company owned by the same company. Um, so anyhow, so this is a C44 ACI, but the particular one which we cannot see in any way, shape, or form because there's no lights coming from the camera at all. Is the is CF four four two in CFCLA livery? So it's in standard CFCLA livery. As you can see, it was bought from Train World for three hundred thirty five dollars because he's left the sticker on it. So into the box, it's just like any standard Australian model box. Slide it open, and then you have the instruction manual of well, random information booklets pretty much. So we have the exploded diagram. I've already seen what one of these look like because of his other C44 yeah, his other two. So, and the internals, uh, explosive, uh, exploded diagram. And this is the standard operation instructions that Decision pretty much puts in every single thing. It has the model features. So, this model, uh, this video will actually have a features unlike my previous videos because I wasn't able to find it. So, I will re I'll pretty much read off that. Which is pretty much on their website, but I thought, seeing this is a review, I should probably put that in. Um, and this is also a slight extra booklet, which is, well, thing, which is basically their wiring diagram. Because this was one, this in the past has had a history of wiring, a slight wiring issues, where basically the, uh, the model was short circuit itself. So, uh, Train Road have now put this in the box so that pretty much we know of we can tell of the issues and probably fix it up ourselves instead of getting them to do it which is slightly voice of warranty but yeah so if, with the foam off we come to the standard block plastic block uh, packaging put that away we can put the packet away for us over there so it's actually we can already tell here it's quite a, a heavy model slide off the plastic uh, the plastic and then Pull it, uh, pull it off, and then out she comes. And uh, just put the casing away again. And it comes with the handrail covers on the side because just to stop the handrail from uh, breaking. So yeah, it's CF forty four double two. So let's go and get some close ups, I suppose, after I clean up all the packaging. So there it is. Uh, Blind shining in the light. So, as we know, uh, this first section is first something, first impressions, and I must admit it looks very, very nice. Uh, it's not technically a first impression for me because I've already, since I've seen so many of these already, I pretty much know what uh, what to look out for. They are uh, very, very nice models. Very, very powerful. Well, somewhat powerful things. It looks very, very accurate as a model, I must admit, looking at it. looks uh, pretty much as accurate as the real one should be. I think the real ones are, were a bit more shinier when they're brand new, but they usually get quite dirtied up very, very quickly anyhow. Um, first uh, something to note about uh, in terms of first impressions is these little um, parts there, the um, MU cables. Um, yeah, they are very, very delicate. And if you convert the couplers over, which these this one's currently fitted with the stat, the original. Sorry, just moving the camera slightly lower. Which is, it's fitted with the Excision the Excision cheap couplers, as they're nicknamed uh, at our club. Uh, something I wouldn't honestly care about on my own railway, and if you're using your own railway, unless uh, if you bring it to a couple out, um, you'll probably want to change them over to a, like a KD number five or something. Um, but the front actually doesn't use a number five. 
the uh, front uses a long shank coupler. The one on the back uses a standard. So that can, that's pretty much number five. But yeah, you will notice that if you put an, uh, another coupler onto it, it kind of crashes into the um, MU cable a little bit. So that's just a random warning. So let's go into a bit of history on the CF class. Right, apologies if it now sounds very echoey because I'm now doing a retake of this section. So it's three years in the future from when this was filmed. So the CF class were made, built by UGL Rail uh, from beginning from 2008 in Broadmeadows, New South Wales, where they were all pretty much constructed from there. And they went to a whole a lot of different operators, 155 of them were constructed. So, yeah, and they were fitted with a 1,000... 4,400 horsepower um, GE en uh, engine. So, yeah, 12 of them were for CFCLA. Uh, they currently still own 10 of them because two of them were sold to Horizon a few years back and currently being used on Hunter Rail coal services as bankers and whatever. Uh, most, as you can see, the CF classes, you can really see C, uh, C44 ACI is pretty much everywhere because they are operated by nearly every company, and whichever companies don't have them, they borrow them from CFCLA, like Cube. They borrow a few, uh, they run them down to uh, pretty much across the network. So, yeah. Uh, UGL are currently looking into uh, making a new type of locomotive instead of continuing the construction of these. Uh, because they are starting to show their age a bit. It is, after all, a 1996 design from the year NRs. So I think that should be all of the information about it. Well, most of the stuff, the main stuff anyways. So from here, let's go and take a look at some of the features of the model. So reading up from the decisions in for handbook, it states that it uses a 5 post screw wire motor, all-wheel drive and all-wheel pickup as we expect from pretty much every Australian company now. It's got a mixture of metal and plastic handrails. More, more or less most of them are plastic. All the ones down the side are all plastic. The ones up the back are metal. So, yeah. Probably the metal one. The metal ones bend easier, but they flex easier. Uh, the metal ones bend easier, but they're harder to break. These ones, the plastic ones, are more brittle, but they can bend. It's funny. Uh, it has see-through etched metal handrail, uh, metal grills, which is only on the top of the engine, so we can't really see it on this yacht, but we will see it on the layout when we start to run it. Uh, it's got a detailed cab, which I can confirm, but you can see the driver sitting there, straight on. You can see the drivers, they're all facing forward, so they technically... These are multi-directional engines in real life, so that's something which is a bit interesting even though you don't really see them going long and leading much anymore. It's got operating um, headlights and taillights, which is expected pretty much nowadays. Uh, twin brass flywheels. Mm. It uses a 21 socket DCC. Uh, uh, well, it's DCC ready, but it uses a 21 pin socket for the, deco for the decoders, which is pretty much the modern standard nowadays, even though 21 technically is a bit much when you're doing in terms of lights and stand DC operation. When you got sound, that, that that's different. Sound is when you really need the functions and when you have things like gen smoke generators and all that sort of stuff, which on the steam engines, that's when you really need the um, extra functions. But yeah, so yeah, uh, that's the details. Let's have a very close look and let's, uh, so let's zoom the camera in. Uh, let's just take a look at some of his details before we jump up on the track for its first operation. And this is what I love with video cameras. They really do a good job in terms of focus. Unlike a, video, unlike a DSLR, you will not be able to get in this close with our macro lens. So as we can see, the paint is very, very crisp on the, all throughout the model. It's very, very clean. Nothing like um, Trainer Armors. They've got a few issues with their paint, but they're having very nice models, I must admit. Uh, we can see the um, ditch lights on the bottom. Uh, we can see uh, below the shot, which we, unfortunately I've had the camera too high for it, but below, we, uh, if I just zoom out slightly, we can see all the brake re uh, brakes and all that sort of stuff. We have the number uh, printed on the top, C uh, CF4402. We have the sandboxes on the wheel 
Is it axles? Oh no, that's not right. Uh, bogies? No, I forgot what they're called. Ready. There's the fuel tank in the centre, and we can see that they've got their parts all pretty much painted. There's a little warning signs put all over it. So they've kept it really high in detail. Very, very nice to see a Cision doing that. That's the long end of the model. Uh, there's something about this model, it's also got, there's a little glowing red light just in there when you're powering it, which um, basically is the fuel. I forgot what it is actually, it's like fuel or something. Um, but that pretty much turns on whenever the hell you run it. Uh, so that's on it. But yeah, so that's, that should conclude um, uh, the um, our, uh, review of the... Um, CF class, let's get on to the layout and let's have a look at how she operates. Well with that I am now on the layout finally. I had to deal with a few issues with uh, the sprinter which is just sitting up the back somewhere that way behind the engines. Uh, somehow it became noisy after going to the club. This is why I don't bring my stuff to the club anymore honestly. But oh well, this is why I only I look after my own stuff. Anyhow, the CF is just here. 502. So let's st uh, stick it in front of the camera. We can see its pair, which will be uh, which will be uh, that will be flipped around because I've actually put that on back to front. I always have that facing the other way usually, but that's 4412. Black caviar. This one is I've forgotten already. 4402. I've forgotten its name. So oops. So yeah, I've already forgotten its name. Something night. Something night. Anyhow, so let's see we'll just ha how well it moves forward and backwards. As we can see, it's very, very nicely uh, going backwards, forwards, and very nicely again going backwards. It's got and its directional headlights already working. So let's uh, get it off on its um, uh, on its forward running. And we're going to get a few shots of her again. I'm just going to start the timer and let's get some shots of her. First section done again. I don't know what the hell I've just done there, but I've just pressed something random. Right, so supposedly we have to stop it, but we actually have to stop it now. I have a feeling the motor's probably a bit warm. It's quite a warm day while doing it today, so yeah, that might be interesting. Yeah, so back the other way, we're going to do the same as per the norm, and then we're going to go and find it. It was meant to run with the container train originally, but yeah, that's not going to happen. So we'll probably put it back on the, put it on the old train with um, which the NR and the DR are currently sitting in front of because they had to pull them off the main route. So yeah, I'm like, I'll lose both those engines and stick the um, two CFs on it. So let's get some more. Uh, let's get rolling. And with that, that's uh, the end again for its. Uh, that's actually that completes its run around. Sorry, run in. 
I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. It doesn't like the gradients of this loud, so that might be an interesting issue. So anyhow, um, to probably let's shove it back a bit. And I'm going to have to turn that caviar, get rid of those two engines, and go and find some more stuff to put behind that train, just to make it more of a point. So let's. I'm going to place the camera here, and you will see a train magically appear behind. Um, 44202. Well, there's part of a train that's been built up behind it. It has to do a bit of shunting because I have put the uh, the camera in front of the point, meaning I can't actually shunt the train without hitting the camera and moving its position where it is. So, yeah, let's just move the camera back slightly. I'm assuming it won't fall over there, I think. Nope, it's going to fall over because that's a ditch. Okay, let's shift around. It's now got, it has actually got packed heavy on the back of it now, so. Actually, we might get his departure from that track, so let's shove the toll train back. Awesome. Right, so with the train ready, we're going to have it depart from the second loop and then head onto the onto the uh, forward loop. And then we'll get some running shots of that and then seemingly we'll end off the video with a conclusion. Well, let's get on moving. On controller. Well, and with that we can see that it has a very, very high performance, especially seeing it's double heading with another one. Um, that extra wagon had to be added due to a couple of issues once it went up the hump pretty much. So, yeah. So we'll get it coming back and we'll get it stuck in front of the camera. Then off the video. Yeah, uh, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you've all enjoyed this review. This up, I tried to, I tried to, I'm trying to push out these a bit more. But in the year this is uploaded, it would be possibly past the time. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna how late I'm gonna upload this year. So most likely it's gonna be in 2008, 19. I'm gonna uploading this, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, hope you'll keep updated with my uploads. Uh, there will be more of them coming out soon, hopefully soon. And I thank you all for watching. Goodbye. Oh,